Now one of my favorite cars with one of my favorite guys, Les Canada over at Classic Datsun Motorsport. Let's talk about this lightweight special. All right. When I ran into you up at Monterey about three or four years ago, mm -hmm. you told me you wanted to find a Roadster. Well, first you said, where can I get a good whorehouse? <laughs> I, I need, and I didn't I know Monterey really. very well. Right. So, so I said, all right. Uh, so I, I pointed him in the direction of what I thought was a good rub and tug. And then he said, let's talk about Roadster. Yeah, that's right. Because usually we talk about cars. Right. So uh, after Monterey, a couple months, we, we found this. And we had done some research on it a, a year previous to this car coming up again. And we kind of were dubious of the, the quoted history of the car. Mm -hmm. And as we were able to research it, and again, luckily get a hold of some of the real BRE people, we found out that this was the car that was always in the story that Pete Brock had been given a factory lightweight car. They got it to the shop. They weren't doing Roadsters anymore by 69. They were almost done with the BRE Roadsters and they were gonna be for sale. So this car sat at BRE and then possibly back at Nissan again for the better part of a year or two. Uh-huh, as a factory lightweight It, was a, it was a factory lightweight Roadster. We've never been able to prove how many were made. There's been rumors anywhere from 10 to 25, you know. Uh, in the recent years, a few more have popped up. Nothing complete and nothing, there's only one really complete car right and, now. And did it leave the factory as a street car? Yes, and had so. a windshield, had a convertible top frame, had all of the goodies. And then why did they make a, just a handful of the factory lightweights? Well, when you wanted to race in certain European races and some other races, you had to have what was called a homologated car. So they had to build a certain amount of cars to get homologated to race. Right. We don't know what the purpose was of these lightweight cars because they actually took it to a different extreme. They lightened the chassis so much that it was too flexible right. to drive. The panels are all lightweight. The, you know, the metal's so thin, if you look at it, it dents. And, so you can tell when you're underneath this car and underneath a stock Datsun Roadster yes. that this is a lightweight totally version. Totally different. Yeah, the chassis are different. So it's a, this is the lightweight version, and somehow it ends up at uh, Craig Breedlove's brother's place. Yep. Uh, the one of the the car went to an employee of BRE in the '72. Mm -hmm. They sold it to an employee or Nissan did, whoever it was. They sold the car to an employee and the BRE guys got involved and sent tons of parts to this guy and he moved back to Utah and he got involved with building the car, finishing it for the 73 season, allowing it to have the different roll cage, the big flares, which you're not allowed normally. Right. So by 73, this car was running in the Colorado, Utah, you know, that And these are VW flares, These right? are VW fenders, completely I mean, fenders. grafted into the original Datsun fenders. steel, steel, steel fenders, yeah. fenders, VW. <laughs> steel fenders, bonded in and grafted. Wow. Very nicely done, by the way. Yeah. And where does Breedlove factor um, in? And, and by the way, Breedlove's the guy who was the Bonneville Flats. I think he had flame. the world record until the goddamn Brits took it away from us, right. by and, the way. And, and Breedlove tried just before the Brits and his car kind of did another one of those real 600 mile an hour uh, Well, he was driving circles. a bone stock Chevy Cavalier. <laughs> He and just, lit too. He, yeah. it he took out the headliner in the back seat. That's it. That's and he put it. some duct tape over the over the front. He yep. took out the windshield wipers, put duct tape over the over that's the headlamps, it. and that he said, it. "I'm going." I'll tell you what that's went it. the NOS. He yeah. should have. He needed the NOS. <laughs> <laughs> but what happened is this car, as it got up into the up into the Utah Colorado region, it didn't. End, it's one of those interesting cars. It doesn't have a terribly significant race history at all but it has this neat kind of ownership history or it's the start of its ownership and it has a lot of authentic a, bre it's parts yeah it. it basically was built and wiring and certain things a lot of it's just from directly from bre and then the great john morton the great driver john morton absolutely who won all the championships over the years for bre and, and other other teams when he was underneath this car he said i made that oil pan that's right and I remember I was like really impressed. The great John Morton said he, when he was at BRE, he said he actually by hand made that oil pan. And then he pointed at the TV set and he said, I made that TV set. <laughs> and then he pointed at a squirrel and he said, I made the squirrel. And then at some point I just said, okay, John, I, I, I know yeah, it's I racing gas. Can't yeah, the fumes. We're taking way too much octane. In. The, the, the interesting thing was, is it, is it was John, before he, they went, before Shelby, or well, he was, before he went to Shelby, John had started out working at a place called Aviad Oil Pans up in Hollywood. Who, uh, what I understand is everybody in racing had worked at Aviad. Basically, that's what it sounds like. I have several on my car 
And yeah. I can tell you that everybody and their brother that welds has worked there. So John's first job when he got to BRE was to make oil pans, six of them. And not only does your other car have one, but it's destroyed. Right. And so we're going to actually, because this car isn't nearly as important as BRE car, we're going to take this oil pan off, put whoa. it on your Whoa, beer. whoa, right in front of the car? <laughs> Come on, <laughs> yeah. that hurts. <laughs> Come well, on, got feelings. What we've done now is oh, we've duplicated that pan and made a very close version of it. So and for, <laughs> for those who are, are just listening, and not watching. We have a kind of grabber orange. Yep. Very unperiod correct sort of Chevy color. Uh, beautiful cage, by the way. Uh, 2000 Roadster with big flares on them. And big again, tires. Steel, <laughs> steel flares and uh, big tires. Factory lightweight and with a lot of original BRE yep. parts on it Absolutely. from the shop. So Breedlove's brother. Okay, yeah, getting back to that. Uh, when the car got, when they kind of got done racing it and road racing, they took it and went into autocrossing. And somehow Bill Breedlove ended up with the car. Now, Bill Breedlove is pretty well known as being a Datsun engine builder up in Utah for a lot of the local guys. And he was pretty famous. Um, he ended up with the car for a period of time. And the car, it's really funny. When I first moved to San Diego in 1988, I went to the, the autocross at the stadium in 1989 and a local guy named Dave Bringle won the autocross championship in 89 and this was the only car he had to race against. They had brought this car down to San Diego. I'd actually seen it in 89, not even known that it was the same it's car. Full and it was in the race with the other car. And so, now the funny part is my buddy owns the Dave Bringle car in North Carolina and vintage races it. And one of these days the two will be vintage racing on the track again together. So you got one breed love who's Land really speed wrecking. Land speed yep. wrecking it. The other one who builds race motors. Yep. Do you think there's a third one who's gay, who they don't talk about? No, but the guy, the, the wicked. But the guy that sold you the 510, he's married to the uh, another breed, love the daughter or the cousin. Of really? Both of yeah. Wow. <laughs> she builds trannies. All right. She was rumored Sounds to have one of the two 959 Porsches that were ever sold in the U.S. Or they had both of them at one time. Jesus two Christ. That were in this country, and they were here in Vista. So. All right. So, uh, Les, thanks for the. Uh, update, by the way, and the no. knowledge on the rare, yet compelling and interesting <laughs> factory lightweight 2000 Roadster. Well, you're very welcome.